Sandeep Ramesh, Managing Director, Nile Limited, an ISB alumnus and has led Nile Limited's transformation since 2009, growing it from 100 crores to over 100 crores to 800 crores in revenue. He oversees key areas like sales, procurement, and risk management. Under his leadership, Nile has now expanding into lithium ion battery and e-waste recycling. He also chairs the Metal Recycling Committee at Recycling Environment Industry Association and serves on the governing council of Vignana Jyoti Institutions. Let's have an engaging session on recycling lead batteries in India. Over to you, Mr. Sandeep. Thank you so much for the introduction, Binaji. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my presentation today is going to be about the scenario for recycling of lead acid batteries in India. So, you know, I'll start off with, so the lead acid battery, uh, as most of you must probably already be aware, is one of the most recycled materials in the world. Uh, various estimates place a recycling rate at about 95% and close to 100% in a lot of countries. So what has been, what, what are the factors that have led to this you know, high recycling rates? So one of the factors, of course, is the fact that it's a technology. The technology for recycling is well-established and mature. And since the lead acid battery consists of a high percentage of lead, it is easy to recover the material and it is relatively low cost for doing recycling. The other factors, of course, are that there are more and more stringent regulations in place as far as sustainability and disposal of hazardous waste is concerned. And that has led to incremental recycling opportunities coming up. Also, the long gestation period for any new mining, pro mining projects to come on board has meant that more and more recycling is being uh, progressively adopted in different countries. Also, we find that OEMs are particularly going in for recycled lead because of the increasing push towards sustainability and recycling in the mindset of consumers across the world. This is a brief snapshot of world lead production and production from mining, production from recycling, and the usage of the metal over the last four years. As you can see, there has been a steady increase, except for a dip in one year between 2021 and 22, there has been a steady single digit increase year, year on year in both uh, the mine output as well as in the usage. The application of lead. Uh, this is probably the area where we see there has been a huge change in the last 30 years. When I, see, when I say change, I mean more in terms of the fact that earlier the application for lead was probably 60% in lead acid batteries and 40% was across various other use cases, including construction, you know, cable, cables, sheathing products, et cetera. But now we find that for a lot of applications, lead has actually been removed or minimized, right from paints to gasoline to lead-free dross. And lead acid batteries, in fact, now form almost close to 90% of the usage for lead. The technologies for recycling of lead can broadly be classified into two categories, hydrometallurgy and pyrometallurgy. Pyrometallurgy, of course, involves the use of a furnace at high temperatures, whether the furnace is a blast furnace, a reverberatory furnace, or a rotary furnace. This is the well-established process that is being used all across the world because it is relatively inexpensive to set up. It's a mature, established technology that results in high recovery of lead at a relatively low cost of processing. Hydrometallurgy is a lot more complex and it is normally only used in metals where the percentage of the metal is minimal and it is the metal is also present with a lot of other metals. So, you know, extracting one metal while not removing the others requires a lot of complex uh, processing, including leaching, solvent extraction, etc. So that's the reason hydrometallurgy hasn't really taken off in lead because it's not really cost effective. The basics of the lead acid battery it consists of basically grids and paste. Grids are basically lead metal. Paste consists of different compounds of lead. Uh, during the usage of the lead acid battery, the, you know, the, the different re chemical reactions take place. 
And finally, when the use lead acid battery comes up for recycling, we end up with lead sulfates and lead oxides in the lead paste. Almost all the materials of the lead acid battery can be recycled. The lead grids and paste, of course, can be recycled to make lead bullion, which is further refined and processed to make refined lead and lead alloys. The plastics can be crushed, washed with water, and then melted and extruded to make pellets, which can be reused in making either new plastic casing or other articles out of plastic. The electrolyte can either be treated and then infused with new concentrated sulfuric acid to make new acid for batteries, or it can be treated with lime to make gypsum, which can then be used in building materials. The separator is probably the only component of the lead acid battery that cannot be reused. And even here, what normally happens is the separators are put back in the rotary furnace. And since they have some amount of carbon, they're basically in a way being utilized for their calorific value. The scenario of lead acid battery recycling in India, you can see that the number of units has more than doubled since the last 15 years. And it's not just that, we also find that the units that were existing in 2010, a lot of them have doubled and even tripled capacity over the last 15 years. Unfortunately, we have also seen the growth of the informal recycling sector alongside the recycling in being done in the formal way, simply because the demand for lead acid batteries in India has grown significantly. The growth probably from the early 2000s to the mid 2010s was in double digits. Since 2015, the growth has been in single digits, but there has still been growth. The major factors that are driving the growth of the battery recycling industry, you know, are the increased demand for lead acid batteries uh, in the auto sector, in the home inverter UPS market. And then we see, you know, the new government mandate that says for any renewable energy project that is put up for connectivity to the grid, there also needs to be power backup of minimum four hours. So for that power backup, all the new projects that are coming up in renewable energy, whether solar or wind, need to have battery power backup. And a lot of them are increasingly opting for lead acid batteries because they're probably the most cost-effective battery storage option available in the market today. The prime minister's new scheme for solar rooftop solar subsidized power is also expected to draw further growth in the lead acid battery market because a lot of people may also want to opt for some backup power. In addition to this, we see demand being robust across tier two and tier three cities uh, for microgrids. This is just a snapshot of the different uses of the lead acid battery. The increasing in demand, like I said, will probably come from the automotive sector. Even though we see the growth in EVs. We find that the growth in EVs is specifically very high in the two-wheeler and three-wheeler market. In the four-wheeler market and in trucks, lorries, etc., we see that there is still continuing significant demand for lead acid batteries. And the replacement sales of the existing high base of vehicles that have been sold in the last four or five years, we see the replacement sales still continuing to result in sustained demand for lead acid, lead acid batteries going forward for the next decade. Some of the environmental concerns are there rightfully because lead is a toxic material if not handled probably, if it's not handled safely. And probably the government regulations have also kept pace and the government has increasingly stringent regulations. There are new norms that have come up regarding the safe handling of batteries. Battery uh, recycling plants are mandated to have automated battery breaking machines as well as acid treatment uh, systems in place, scrubbers to ensure the proper pollution control equipment, scrubbers that clean any uh, toxic fumes that are generated in the process. The BWMR rules which came up in 2022 covered the different types of batteries in the market and these mandated that for every battery sold, a certain percentage of batteries are actually used batteries are collected shifting the onus of this collection onto the producers primarily. These rules prescribed a certain percentage of the number of batteries to be collected and also recovery in the recycling of batteries. Non-fulfillment leads to imposition of penalties and EPR or extended producer responsibility credits 
are given for producers and they are mandated to comply with their quota which they are responsible for which of course depends on the total number of batteries that are sold in the market so some of our obs our observations regarding the new bwmr rules were probably if instead of linking recovery percentage if the government had come out with a mechanism to ensure that more volumes are recycled that might have led to a better incentivized approach to ensure more recycling also probably the floor price for floor price for uh, certificates of epr should be fixed in the more realistic scenario rather than an artificially low or an artificially high price the rules apply to producers consumers importers and recyclers the dealers have been left out of this which we felt was a glaring omission the role of the producer is to ensure that all compliance documentation is fulfilled and the mandated quota of epr targets is complied by them this is the these are the different targets for both automobile and industrial batteries going forward as you can see by 2029 30 they will need to be 100% compliance so in the next 5 years we are hoping that there will be increased collection and take back of used batteries in the market leading to even further demand for uh, recycled lead over a uh, primary lead the role of the recyclers is expected to increase going forward and sourcing of lead will only happen from formal recyclers going forward so the conclusion is that the demand is robust for lead acid batteries and hence the demand continues to be robust for the lead acid recyclers in the country and even though there has been a lot of talk of adoption of evs we see that the shift is happening quicker in the two wheeler and three wheeler market but we feel for larger vehicles there will continue to be a large demand for lead acid batteries and so we hope that the demand will continue to be in the high single digits at least going forward in the next decade that's all for me thank you